welcome back to the Forge, to the Pirate Forge. My name is Wayne, and um, anyways, we're about to make something really cool out of absolute garbage, junk, hodgepodge, trash, um, you know, trash to treasure. Another person's trash is another person's treasure, but something like that. I've got a friend of mine making something special for his dad. His dad's been following my work for years now. And um, he's been wanting this this charcuterie or barbecue set, whatever the hell you say, charcuterie, something chocolate cutter cutter on a barbecue grill. It's barbecue grill stuff. So basically, three things: going to make a knife, going to make a spatula, and going to make a fork, like a two prong barbecue fork. But again, we're going to make it out of junk. So first things first, let's go find this junk that we're going to make this awesome stuff out of. I had to stop by, my, my head hen here was chilling and she wanted to say hey, so I've got three three chickens now, I'm gonna get some more, but we get some really cool eggs and um, they free range around here all the time, they're always inside the shop. She lets me pick her up, but then after I pick her up, then she wants to be down, so she's she's just a little moody, so anyways, alright, let's go, let's go on this adventure. Ever seen that movie Jeepers Creepers? Well, this is like the Jeepers Creepers truck. It just showed up here one day. So, anyways, I got some good, some good garbage inside of this old truck. We need some steel to make this out of. That'll work. Spring still. Go like a vehicle leaf spring. So. Check, check box there. We got the steel. Need something for the handle. This is the Pirate Forge shipwreck. The Great Flood of 79 is what I was told is what brought this in here. But we have a we have a pirate vessel here. There's lots of goodies in here, and I'm pretty sure we've got some some old some old wood down here, some teak wood. So teak's really nice. Let's uh, let's go digging. is probably an old compartment hatch or something but um but yeah pretty sure this is teak teak wood and yeah it may seem like trash but teak wood never goes bad and actually old antique teak wood can be worth some money so there we go we got a handle material out of this old shipwreck here so all right back to the forge let's uh let's get this going Back in the shop, we got our garbage. One rusty old leaf spring. That's a good thickness to it. And then we got some old, old teak wood. So we're gonna file off the forge. Um, I'm gonna start off getting this in here. I think my idea is to get this, once I get it into the forge, straighten it up. Then I'm gonna start to upset it, to thicken it up a little bit, make the stock a little bit thicker. Cause I'd like the handle area to be a little bit thick and then forge it out into the blade, the fork, 
and the spatulas. So really I have no clue what I'm doing. I haven't even drawn anything out. We're gonna just work from my head and uh, see what we come up with. So let's let's do it. High tech, high tech machinery here, Pirate Forge. We got some blow dryers and we got a stripper, stripper poles. Believe it or not, but the stripper pole has just the perfect inside diameter for airflow. So, you know, and it's upcycling, and I'm all about recycling. All right, I'm gonna put this leaf spring in here. Sometimes I put coatings on this stuff and it makes really weird colored flames. My advice to you guys is stay the hell away from it. Put it in the forge and get the hell away from it. Let all that shit burn off of it. So let's put it in here, see if it does any crazy colored flames, and we're gonna go chill over there for a minute while it gets up to 10.
by now you can probably tell what piece is going to be what piece. Um, it's kind of looking like a barbecue set. So the next the next step I'm about to do, uh, I want to start creating the, the fork here. So we're going to uh, put us a punch mark right here. I want to uh, drill a hole through it and then we're just going to use the side grinder to cut a slit and that way we can heat it up and ar articulate this uh, this fork the way we want it. So. Let's go do that and then we'll keep moving on.
right, so we we have three things here. Um, three metal turds. But I'm going to polish them. I'm going to make them look. I'm going to make these turds into something nice. So, But still, started from that leaf spring that was about that thickness right there. And um, forged out these three things. And they're very rough. But uh, we're going to hit the grinder now. Start finalizing the shape of everything. Um, and see if we can make these look even more like what they're supposed to be. So, All right. Let's do it. We got some um, some nice red label braces, belts. We're about to chew on these pieces of steel with and uh, make them look good. Yeah. All right, welcome to my grinding table of doom. Here I've got a Bader, a Steven Bader 3 grinder. Super crazy workhorse that I started with. Um, over here we have the, the Travis Wartz TW90. Excellent machine. All these are excellent machines, really. But this is my newest machine. This is my Broadbeck Ironworks. The guys over at Broadbeck are some killer dudes. Um, doing a lot of innovating. Um, and they have more attachments on the market than pretty much any of the other grinder guys out there. Um, so again, that's why I'm part of the Broadbeck Ironworks team. And that's why my newest grinder edition was a Broadbeck. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take this flat plat attachment off of here. They've got a really nice attachment that it comes to a small wheel, but instead of bringing the belt at a V, it brings that belt just like that. So you don't have any, you're not going to lose any extra metal, and it's going to be perfect for shaping the spatula and um, grinding those, those two prongs on the fork. So yeah, let's, uh, let's switch this right here out, and uh, we'll put this bra back to work. Yeah, this little this little roller right here drops that belt down where the, the the imprint of that belt is just nothing but just this right here so you can get right inside of where you need to go very nice People ask me, you know, well, if you like one grinder better than another, why do you have three different grinders? Um, again, these are all grinders I started with, and it's nice to have three grinders because that way I can have three different attachments on each one. And um, so, again, all these grinders do serve their serve their purpose. But uh, like I said, just the broad back. If I was someone coming out here to getting into bladesmithing and wanted to get a professional grade grinder for the price point and then for everything you're getting with the grinder um and again the customer service from the guys at Rob Beck this is the one I tell you guys to go out there and, and snack so yeah but you know just like everything else in life um you can never have enough of them so the more grinders the merrier but uh anyways all right let's get on this thing bit of grinder magic we looking good I especially like this this knife though <laughs> 
that is just a pretty, pretty style knife. I think it's like a French, French style knife. I, I, I just love the, I, lo I love the look of that integral. So, all right. So now, game plan: putting all this stuff into the forge. Gonna put touch mark into the knife. Gonna put a touch mark into the uh, the fork. We're gonna take these two spy, the two um, points, whatever the hell you call those pointy things. We're gonna bring those closer together. Um, and then spatula. We're going to put the touch mark into this. And then we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna put it into the vise at this point, and then give it that bend, a little slight upward bend that you usually see. And yes, this is freaking ridiculous. It's like a 10-pound spatula. Looks more like a fly swatter currently. But what I'm gonna do is, is after heat treat, because shit, if I gotta heat treat that, I'm gonna heat treat everything. It's all spring still. That's pretty cool to have a heat treated spatula and a fork. So, anyways, gonna grind this down really thin um, after the heat treat. You go in too thin into the heat treat. Um, still likes to crinkle up on you anyways like a potato chip so anyways all right it's getting late i got things to do um let's go get these in here let's wrap this up so we can go into heat treat tonight and uh plan is we'll just finish these up tomorrow so all right rock and roll let's do this really high oxidizing temperature for this first heat cycle and then we're going to drop the cycles and the thing is you know I mean do you really need to heat treat the spatula or the fork no not really but I've got to run the knife through this anyways why the hell not <laughs> we're gonna have it all heat treated so anyways let's go over here let's check out what we got and uh, give you guys a rundown because like I said we about to stop for the night we're gonna be putting it through the heat cycles just chilling and then tomorrow get back on it but let's take one more look at the progress that we've made today so yeah i mean from from an old piece of crap leaf spring to to these and they're still rough but i mean pretty pretty good looking i'm happy with the progress we've got today um, excited to get them through the heat treat and um, make these things a total reality. So, anyways, all right, let's get some rest. Jump back on these tomorrow. <laughs>